The Lowen Institute recently announced its third round of Shkreli Awards. A top 10 list of the worst examples of dysfunction in healthcare. And we thought that was pretty newsworthy. This is Healthcare Triage News. Martin Shkreli, former CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals, is well known for raising the price of an antiparasitic drug from $13.50 a pill to $750 a pill after obtaining the manufacturing license for it. As you can imagine, he won no popularity awards for this, but the Lowen Institute did name these awards for him. Nominees for the awards are put forward by Institute staff and readers of their weekly newsletter. And winners are then determined by a panel of health policy experts, clinicians, patient activists, and journalists. This year's winner of the number 10 spot is Dr. Jose Bazelga, former chief medical officer at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, for failing to disclose millions of dollars given to him by drug companies. He did resign from his position for violating those conflict of interest policies, but he's now a big wig in research and development over at AstraZeneca, so who's to say how much justice was served? Number 9 spot went to Dr. Mark Zucker at the Newark Beth Israel Medical Center. Dr. Zucker, the director of the heart and lung transplant programs, received his award for directing staff to keep an unsuccessful transplant patient, Daryl Young, alive for seven months following transplant in order to improve the program's survival rates. This was done without informing his family that doctors did not believe Daryl would ever wake up and recover. The number eight spot is shared by 35 people, nine of them doctors, for billing Medicare for unnecessary cancer DNA tests to the tune of 2.1 billion with a B dollars. According to the Lone Institute, seniors and disabled patients were enticed by doctors who received kickbacks from companies to have the genetic testing done. Number seven spot goes to Acadia Healthcare, a for-profit psychiatric hospital chain for several healthcare violations, including but not limited to accusations of unnecessarily holding patients to increase profits, using drug injections as a form of punishment for children, instigating fight clubs, and sexually abusing young patients. The number six spot was awarded to the University of North Carolina Medical Center. The hospital earned their place in this list after telling cardiologists to keep referring children to their pediatric heart surgery program despite concerning mortality rates. The hospital's reasoning for demanding continued referrals? Without them, they'd lose money. And no list like this would be complete without mention of the Sackler family, who owns the now scandal-ridden Purdue Pharma. The number five spot is reserved for Purdue executive Dr. Richard Sackler, who concealed the strength of opiates, encouraged aggressive marketing, and attempted to place responsibility for the addiction aftermath on the victims. Spot number four goes to the Manor Care nursing home chain owned by the Carlisle Group. Their place in this list was earned by a heinous neglect of their approximately 25,000 elderly patients. By 2017, the chain had almost 2,000 health code violations. The Carlisle Group has since filed for bankruptcy, and Manorcare has been purchased by the nonprofit group ProMedica Health. Spot number three goes to Dignity Health, who told their employee over the phone that her premature daughter's medical expenses would be covered. Their employee, Lauren Bard, was later sent a bill for close to $1 million because the baby had not been enrolled online within 31 days of her birth, something a lot of plans require, but of which Lauren Bard was unaware. The best part? The company's motto is, hello, human kindness. Spot number two is shared by Team Health and Envision, physician staffing companies that spent millions on ad campaigns against legislation that would end surprise hospital billing because they profit a lot from that kind of billing. They were able to quietly fund these ads through political organizations they created and named Dr. Patient Unity. And finally, the number one Shkreli Award goes to nonprofit hospitals that sue low income patients garnish low income wages, and in some cases even own their own debt collection agency. Nonprofit hospitals are generally exempt from taxes and thus expected to provide charity care and financial assistance when needed, not garnish the wages of people whose ER bill is more than double their monthly income. This list is truly terrible, but we should also mention the many, many, decent, well-intentioned caregivers who treat their patients with competence and compassion. The vast majority of people are doing the right thing for the right reasons, but it's important to shine a light on bad actors in any field, especially a field where the customer's lives are literally on the line. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on waste in healthcare spending. And while we've got you, go to patreon.com slash healthcare trios, where you, like our research associate Joe Sevitz and our surgeon admiral Sam, can help support the show and make it bigger and better. 